Hey guys, Mr. Mitchell here, how's it going? Uh, in this video I'm going to be taking you through how to use your calculator effectively and the first bit of advice I would give you is to make sure you have your own calculator. So if you don't have one, go and buy one from a supermarket. They can be as cheap as up to um, £10. I've seen them as low as £5 before uh, in some supermarkets. So make sure you buy one. The reason being that if you turn up on the day of your final exam without your own calculator, you'll be given a calculator which you probably don't know how to use. Okay, and that can cause problems for you during your exam and you've probably got enough stress and pressure during the exam day as is. Okay, so let's get started. So over the next year and hopefully beyond, your calculator will become your best friend. So let's see why. So there's a couple of buttons on your calculator which I'll take you through. So the first one would be the times 10 to the X button if you're using a Casio or the EXP button if you're using a Sharp or a Texit. So what this does is it's basically the scientific notation button. It will put help you input numbers into scientific notation. So let's say you had this huge number here and you wanted uh, this in scientific notation. Then this would be in the calculator as 1.4725 times 10 to the power of X times 14. So you wouldn't have to um, put in anything else rather than the number and the button times 10 to the power of X and then the number is 14 and that's on a Casio. But if you're using an EXP uh, or a Sharp or a Texit um, then you would use the EXP button and it plays a very similar role there. Okay, you would just instead of doing times 10 to the X use the EXP one. The next button is the S to D which basically changes fractions into decimals and decimals back to fractions again. In physics we don't use fractions so stay away from fractions and um, so this button can be very handy. Another um, thing to be aware of is the recurring button and this is because we don't use recurring symbols in physics. We always want to round our answers to one or two decimal places. Okay, so for example, if you had an answer 6.6 .6 dot, 6.6 .6 recurring on your calculator, you would round this up to 6.67. All right. Um, X to the minus one, this is called the inverse button or the reciprocal button. And this will become very useful for us later on when we do things like resistance in parallel, when doing electricity, and also the period equation when doing the waves topic. So this basically just lets you take one divided by the number of something and it's a quick way of doing that. Uh, the second last button to make you aware of is the ENG button. I think this stands for engineering and this can be useful. It's not massively useful, but I have seen it on some uh, calculators, but this can be useful if you want to change numbers into prefixes. And because we use prefixes in powers of three in physics, this puts things into powers of three or powers of six or powers of nine and so on for you. Um, so for example, if you had an answer of 42,500,000 hertz, this would become 42.5 times 10 to the six hertz when you press the ENG button. And then you could then write that in the final answer as 42.5 megahertz. You don't have to do that though, and you can just leave answers in their full hertz form, for example. And the last button to make you aware of is just the fraction button, which I'm sure you've probably all used before in things like maths. And this is useful for calculating averages. We do use it and it can be useful for things like the acceleration equation and equations where there's a, there's a division as well, rather than just you pressing um, the divide button. So the last thing to mention here, guys, is that when you're doing calculations, you really should round your final answers to one or two decimal places. That's all it takes. Uh, we're not looking for you um, to write all the numbers down that appear on your calculator because that just doesn't help anyone. We really just want you to round your answers to one or two decimal places. So keep that in mind every time you're writing down a final answer. Okay, so that's pretty much it from me, guys. I hope you found this video useful and I'll speak to you in the next video. Take care.